With version 4, the ESP32 Bluetooth Relay application and the UI display are now fully synchronized. In the previous video, we built a custom Android application in Android Studio to control the MHH 1.28 inch timer switch relay using Bluetooth. We kept it very simple, just relay control buttons and feedback messages so that even beginners could customize it easily. In that project, I completely ignored the display, encoder and button. The idea was to treat the kit as just an ESP32 S3 with a relay board. So the same code could run on any ESP32 board without modification. That project will now serve as a template for all Bluetooth based control systems. Now, in this version 4 update, I use the exact same Android application without changing even a single line of code. I only made a few small modifications to my existing project in Squareline Studio. In version 3, if you remember, we built a home automation system using the user interface in the Blink application. This time, I simply modified that same UI to create this project. Anyway, I will explain more about this later in the video. I also made some modifications on the controller side program. What changes I made will become clear to you in just a moment when I demonstrate everything practically. See, in version 4, I was going to make a control system for a bike, but some people sent me emails. One of my supporters on Patreon also said, in fact, he even shared the idea that he wants to use it as a two-way system. And on TikTok, also my followers requested that I use the same Android application with the user interface. So, my YouTube and TikTok family, here it is. First, I will share with you its practical demo, and then after that, we will talk more about it. In the previous project, the display was completely blank, but this time, as you can see on screen 1, I added 4 switches with the same labels to avoid any confusion. On screen 2, I used the same background image where I show the date and time. Anyway, let's go back to screen 1. In version 2, we had fully synchronized the user interface with the Blink application, and I have added the same features in this project as well. This was the only part that took more time because I had to make a lot of changes in the code to do it. Anyway, now the user interface and the Bluetooth application are completely synchronized. So when I turn on any switch in the mobile application, the same switch also turns on in the user interface. And not only that, the controller also sends feedback to the Bluetooth application, which lets the user know that the command was successfully executed. Without this feedback feature, the user would be confused about whether the load actually turned on or off. This is very useful in situations where the loads are not physically visible. This is now a complete two-way communication system. For example, I can turn on relay 1 from the Bluetooth application, but I can also turn off the same relay from the user interface. And the best part is when someone uses the UI to turn relays on or off, the updated relay status is also sent back to the Bluetooth application. For this, it's not necessary for the Bluetooth application to stay active. Even if it's running in the background, it will still receive the relay status even if I turn the phone screen off. Now, let me randomly turn some relays on and off and then we will open the application to check. Amazing! All the relay statuses we changed are received perfectly. Now, let's quickly test how fast the system works. Look at the speed. This is crazy fast. This setup is completely ready for installation. You just need to add some fancy buttons in the Android application and it's all set. The complete project code along with the original Android application source code is available on my Patreon page. I will add a link in the description below. I have already made detailed videos on Squareline Studio and LVGL which you can find in my ESP32 projects playlist. For projects like this, you should have at least some background in Squareline Studio. Even if not too much, you should at least know how to start a new project, how to import an existing one and how to use basic widgets. All the widgets you see here, I have already explained and used in my previous videos. So for the basics, make sure you watch those videos. Now, on screen 1, you can see I have just used 4 switches. I have also given them proper names so that when I'm working in Arduino IDE, I don't face any issues while tracing these buttons. I have also assigned events to these buttons. For example, when I turn Relay1 switch on or off, the function Relay1 fun is called. Similarly, for Relay2, it's Relay2 fun. For Relay3, it's Relay3 fun. And for Relay4, it's relay for fun. 
you will find all these functions inside the UI events.h file. And then you will use these same functions in your main.ino file to control the relays, update their status, and so on. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode. And thanks for watching.